Thank you for choosing CTN. And now it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you, Brooke. Hi, everybody. That was Brooke's voice. It was. She did a great job. I know it. I know it. She just stops in just to do that, and then she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a, a guy that, <laughs> like me, yes. like me, mm -hmm. he doesn't age. <laughs> Nothing like bragging on it, yourself. It, it, yeah, I, I, keep, I keep telling myself that, yeah, sure, because people will say that to me, and I'll go, how do you really feel? <laughs> And, the, yeah, you know, I'm looking for that shock so look sometime that goes, you know, what, where they're shocked and go, are you the Herman that I yeah. used to know when you were 40? Because that's the age that we started here. That's right. Actually, you didn't start with me. You were here. But you I was here. I worked. What are you talking about? I know. You, you were my, she was I my, wasn't on. She was my I off, wasn't on the set. Off but. camera holding my cue cards. We've been together since we were babies. Yeah, yeah, I know. We often <laughs> say this. This May we will have been married uh, 59 years. Mm -hmm. Oh man! Yeah, 59 I know. I know. Can you believe it? Years. I don't even like to think about it. That means I, after my birthday now, one year in one year I will be 80, and in one year after our anniversary we will be married the next time, 60 years. Mm -hmm. If and we're I, still here. And I keep telling her, on our 60th anniversary, we really got to do something. And then, <laughs> and then it dawned on me, isn't that time for our kids to do something for us? <laughs> like <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> put us in a nursing home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. At least put us on a cruise or something. Uh, I have a good friend. And 20 years ago, he was on uh, probably Action, well, Action 60 is what yeah, it was. Yeah, sure it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he hasn't truthfully. And he he, re he remembers what you even said back yeah, then. Yeah, I know. I know he hasn't changed a bit. Wow. Uh, the, uh, there, hey, Dave, can you get a shot of of Ken Klein? He is Jewish. <laughs> Did you figure that out from the name? Ken <laughs> Klein. Uh -huh. And I've never met. And, and this is the truth. I'm not just making this up. I've never met. How can I put this so yeah, it be comes careful. out correct? <laughs> a non-intelligent Jewish person. Every Jewish person I have ever met in my lifetime, and I grew up with them in Chicago. Mm -hmm. My dad was in the jewelry business as well as the motel business, and, and he would sell diamonds and costly watches and Piogets and all of that, Patty Philippe, top <laughs> shelf, good stuff. And he always dealt with, the, with Jewish people. And he would tell me from time, and he said, you know, people are really don't like the Jews. And I, I go, why? He goes, I don't know. Don't know. Mm -hmm. People don't like the Jews. I said, well, they got more money than anybody else. He goes, I know. <laughs> Maybe so, that's the reason. <laughs> so, anyway, Ken Klein, here he is. Let me tell you about him, because he is an amazing guy. Uh, he is an author, and that's the book we're going to talk today about. Uh, he's a documentary film maker with nearly 20 films to his credit, probably more after this, uh, he is driven by a passion for the truth, and he, his book depicts that. Uh, he was born and raised in a traditionally Jewish household in Los Angeles in the 1940s. Ken converted to Christ mm. in his 20s and went on to serve as pastor in three different Christian churches. Thank you for coming back and seeing us. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Isn't it amazing how we're still breathing together? Well, I got to say this about you. You don't look a day older than 78. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, you know, it's the first time anybody's ever said that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, uh, it's good to be back. It's been so long. Yeah. You, know, I, you got you to tell my audience. Okay? No, Come, no. Please. I did it last time. Okay, just quick. You got to tell my audience. We this got a new audience. You can't do that. You can't do that. In 20 years, I've got a different audience. <laughs> Most of the ones that were watching when you were here, they're dead. Okay, so, so, so we're starting again. All right, all right, all right. What did I ask you? Tell me the story about how your wife fell into a sewer in Jordan when you were on a trip to the Middle East. <laughs> I went like, who wants to hear this story? Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why do you need this story? I'm just, by the way, Sharon looks a lot better than you. I know it, I know it. Yeah, and that, and that, that okay, is, we were on a trip to Jordan 
this is so dumb. I can't believe you asked me that. We were, I, I asked dumb questions. <laughs> we, we were walking around, uh, and the women had a place where they would relieve themselves. And as my wife was finding some spots, some lady said, hey, go. This is the place to go. And she fell through this concrete pavement up to oh her, uh, just above her knees and all of this <gasps> human waste. And it was horrible because she was three months pregnant at that oh, time. So we were goodness. really frightened about, uh, you know, cholera. And Absolutely. And nothing, we prayed and washed her off with bottled water and we went on the tour. That, there's the story. You went on the tour. Yeah, we did the tour. <laughs> now you're happy? <laughs> see, see <laughs> now, what, now we what, brought you up to date what's the from redemptive, 20 years ago. <laughs> what is the redemptive value of that story? Because you just nothing didn't happened. quit. Okay. That, right. that's, it, okay that's, that, a, that's actually an example of your life. Okay. Yeah. All right, so point, just, points uh, to your team. There you go, okay. Uh, okay, the under, unforgettable tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, did you read it? Yes, you, you you say some pretty amazing things in here. Well, it was, and I, after after getting into it, I wasn't too sure I wanted to talk to you. I know, I know. It's just like what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the the book came as a result of a film that I did about three or four years ago um, concerning the Temple Mount. Everybody believes, the whole Christian world believes, all the Jews believe that the the temples of Solomon and later Zerubbabel were built on the Temple Mount. After all, it's called the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. And as I studied and as I researched the first century, because I realized I was pretty ignorant concerning the history of the first century, and I went back there and I began to go, wait a minute, this, this something's not right here, that the temples were not built on the Temple Mount. Now that's a huge controversy because okay, then it when called- you, Okay, when you discovered that, Yeah. What are you saying to yourself? Well, I, I'm going, this is so untraditional uh, that... You know, Fiddler on the Roof, have you ever seen Fiddler on the yeah, Roof? Yeah, traditions, the, yes. dun, da, da, dun, Trad tradition, yeah. Traditions. Yeah. Tradi yeah. Well, and by the way, I was raised in, in a Jewish house that wasn't really orthodox or even conservative. My parents didn't really go to synagogue or anything. My father wasn't even bar mitzvah. In fact, uh, I wasn't bar mitzvah. What's, what's interesting about uh, this person, Ken Klein, is that when I was seven days old, my Aunt Jenny, who was this wild uh, spinster type of woman from Hungary, because they're all, sec I'm second generation Eastern European. Yeah, your family's from Poland and, and, and Hungary. Hungary. Yeah. Uh, she got saved at an Amy Semple McPherson's oh my in Southern goodness. California. She got tampered with. Yeah, and, and she had a radical conversion. And so when my parents had, uh, decided to go on a, a, a night away from their children. It's only, I'm seven days old. My Aunt Jenny was asked to babysit me and she baptized me when I was seven days old. Oh my goodness. So my, there's been this holy water hand of God on me for my whole life. I've always believed in Jesus. I just didn't know what to do with the fact that I reverenced his name from the earliest stages of my life. And nobody talked about his name in my house. And I, and I, I believed in the Lord my whole life, but didn't give my life to the Lord until I was around 24, 25 years old. And then everything, the lights went on. Well, he called you before the foundation of the world. Yeah, absolutely. So but that's are. the kind of the interesting uh, phenomena that happened yeah. through my aunt's intercession and doing that. I mean, God honored it somehow. I don't, I can't even explain it. Well, I didn't know till I was 60s, my 60s, my mother was very angry that she did that because they're Jews and finally told me uh, about 10, 15 years ago, uh, did you know, I didn't never told you this, but she, your Aunt Jenny baptized you when you were seven days old. Dad and I were livid. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, and so that's, that's, that's an interesting facet, but uh, mm -hmm. I've always believed in Jesus from the very beginning of my life. And you know why? Yeah, because I've been called. The yes, Lord, you know, we're absolutely. all called. So, Isn't it amazing? How, you know, people are surprised that with this guy here, and he had to go over here, and he, and he ended up in this state, and whatever, and they'll tell these things, and whatever, and they're, they're talking about it as if, but God designs every area. What's interesting is, I was at my 20-year reunion, high school reunion, I ran into this kid named Don Heichel, and his mother uh, had come running into the garage when he got bitten by a hamster, and she was actually speaking in tongues. It freaked me out. I didn't know what was going on. And she realized that she had to talk to me about what she had done. And she said, do you, do you know that Jesus is the Messiah of the Jews? And I said, yes, I just want to get away from this crazy lady. Oh, I wasn't ready to say anything. <laughs> she made me pray. So I ran into Don at that 20 year reunion 
And I said, you know, your mother had a big impact on my life. I only met her once. And, I, and uh, I, I'm a four square pastor now. Actually ended up, and she said, my mother's four square. And he freaked out. <laughs> well, uh, I ended up pastoring three four square churches. I got, my Aunt Jenny was saved by Amy Miss Semple McPherson. And there's this, this whole Goodness amazing, gracious. you know, I, I'm kind of independent of that now, but that's an amazing line that led me through. Did you, I mean, you, you've had to have a lot of people when they're talking to you say, well, aren't you Jew? I mean, with Klein, with that name. Well, I mean, genetically, yeah. I, my body yeah. lattice is yeah. uh, genetically Jewish, but spiritually, yeah. no. I, I am. Uh, I've been outside of that for most of my life, yeah. you know. But but in terms of did I come through a Jewish lineage? Yes. Yes, of course. It's, but it's a real honor. Well, let's get back uh, to the Temple Mount. We kind of got off of oh, that, didn't we? Okay. Yes. Okay, well, I mean, I started seeing things that have been traditionally held by the church and by the Jewish people that just are simply not biblical. And, and, and that, that... Okay, what is your... What is your the, the temple, the temple, place? The temple uh, could not have been built on the Temple Mount. For one, there's many reasons, but the most important reason is that when King David came into the area, he conquered the city of Jebus, Okay, because 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 uh, it, it was unconquerable when when Joshua came into the land. That's the one place he couldn't conquer because it was so formidable ge geographically. It was like a, a precipice, like 300 foot high mounds, and it was surrounded by deep valleys, and they, it was easily defended. And plus, there was a lot of water down there from the the Brook Kidron and the Gihon Springs. It's right down there. But in Jebu, so they had plenty of water; they could handle any siege. Well, David said, "I got to get this place. This is where I want to build my city." And and, he, and so he conquered Jebu, and and the water was principally the reason, besides the form, formidableness of the area, and he needed water for the inhabitants of the city. But he also needed a lot of water, running water. Uh, for the temple, Levitical priesthood. They had to wash the animals, they had to bathe consistently, and when they finally built the temple, it was built over the city of David, which was the ancient city of Jebus, and it was because the water was so important. Now, if you can imagine David, who was a strategic military thinker, why would he build the temple on the Temple Mount when he needed water, and the Temple Mount is about 200 meters from the, the Brook Kidron and the, the Gihon Springs. You, it would have taken 20,000 uh, gallons of water a day to fill up the laver, which is where the priest washed. Now, can you imagine the chore that would have been? And in, 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 the Jews would say schlepping, <laughs> schlepping water from, from the Gihon up to the Temple Mount. It would, have been, it would have been impossible. And the laver was 20,000 gallons copper bowl that sat on four bulls. And uh, it would have been too, too difficult to do that. So he built, he built his city uh, o over the Gihon Springs, which would have fed the city with plenty of water. Where is that at? The Gihon is about 200 meters south of where the Al-Aqsa Mosque is, which is the southern portion of the Temple Mount, about 200 meters. So it's a big... So is that up or down? It, well, it's down from there. Uh, but, but people don't understand that when you go to Jerusalem, it took me three visits. I've been there nine times. But when, the last time I went before I made this film, as I was making this film, I realized I didn't understand really what the lay of the land was in Jerusalem. The, the walled cities that people are familiar with that have traveled there isn't Jerusalem of old. The Jerusalem of old is the city of David. And that's south of the walls of the, of the present day Jerusalem. And so uh, this is really a problem when you go there to try to understand the land because what, what what happened about 180 BC is that when the Hasmoneans were taking back control of the temple, the Ju Maccabees, you know, they, they, Judah Maccabee conquered uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, who was the Syrian king that came down and destroyed the temple in terms of its sanctity. And he desecrated animals. They had uh, uh, people committing fornication in the temple, and it had to be it had to be recaptured by the Syrians. And Judah Maccabee did, and that's what set up Hanukkah of the Jews and the Jews. Of course, they don't know any of this history, uh, but it wasn't totally cleaned uh, until his younger brother Simon came and he said, this, is, this place is too destroyed. We have to tear it down and rebuild it. So Ta Solomon, I, I should say, uh, Simon rebuilt, tore down the temple and he rebuilt the temple. This was the, Jer the Jerubbabel temple, the second temple, uh, right over the city of David. 
And, uh, and so that's been lost in history because we don't read the book of Maccabees. But during that time, he thought to himself, I can't allow there to be this Mount Zion, which was in the southern portion of the city of David, where the city of David was, because the, the Syrians had gained that high ground. And for 20 years, they were shooting arrows and throwing rocks down at the Jews that were trying to keep the temple. So he decided to excavate Mount Zion. And so he took all of the dirt, took three years. It's in the book of Maccabees, 1st Maccabees. People don't read it. The Catholics had it in their canon, but we don't read it. And we, that's a hidden time of history, yeah. Jewish history. It was history. included in the canon. It was yeah. in their canon. Yeah. So they took that dirt and took three years and they carted that dirt and they filled some of the Kidron Valley with it and some of the Valley of the Cheesemongers on the other side with it. But they took the majority of that dirt up to the Temple Mount, which was just crags and it was just, it wasn't smooth, it wasn't a plateau. And they used Mount Zion, the dirt from Mount Zion, to smooth out that whole area up there called the Temple Mount. That's 35 acres. All the dirt up there is Mount Zion. And the Wailing Wall is a retaining wall to hold the dirt in place. It's not, it has nothing to do with the temple. That, that Wailing Wall is a retaining wall. And I've been inside there and looked at it. It's in my film. You'll see it in this uh, Lost Temple of the Jews. Which, by the way, if, if you want to see what right, caused me right, to write this book that right we'll talk about, there. it's free. You just have to go to my website and you can download the URL mm -hmm. and you can see it today if you want. Did, this you, is what, did you hear that? He said free. Free. Just, just have to download <laughs> it and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you can have it today. Because it's important for people to understand that this tradition that is held by so many is false. It's not where the temples went. They were over the city of David. It's become a real a tourist attraction now. Well, you even, uh, that's the reason I say with reading through his book, I'm going, should I interview this guy or not? Exactly. There's a lot of stuff in here yes. that I am not really researched on. Exactly. And one of the places is the, where Christ traditionally was born, Jesus. Well, he was born in Bethlehem. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. But you're saying where they say Jesus was born or were, were, is not really correct? I, well, I don't talk about that in my book. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering where you read that in my book because well, I don't think I talk about that. Well, yeah, but I, I read that on some of your bio. Oh, okay. But is, is that, I mean, are all of the places, the tomb okay, and so, so forth? Okay, so if you go to Jerusalem today, for example, and you went, like, there's only two places you can go where they think Jesus was killed. Right. The Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which was built by Helena, Constantine's mom. She had a dream, built it over on the west side of town. Or if you're, uh, uh, that, that's the, the, the Catholics and the Greek Orthodox Church believe that. Okay. okay? Or if you go to, uh, if you're uh, evangelical or Pentecostal or wherever you're at, or you go to the Garden Tomb area, which is north of the Damascus Gate. Right. Both of them are wrong. Okay, so though traditionally they've been held as the places. And, and I, t I talk about that in my film. And so you're just blowing everything apart. Well, because tradition's the enemy of truth. And I, that's the, that's, is the premise of this film, because it is. Because what we hold to be true is stuff we learn from tradition, not from the scriptures or from archeological discoveries or the facts of history. And we, I love the truth. And man, it, 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 sure, I'm gonna catch a lot of flack because people are not gonna like the fact of what I'm saying. That's why you're, you're going through that. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> but something, something had to start the tradition. Something, some truth had to start that tradition well, in the first place. Yeah, the you, you blame a lot on Constantine, right? Yeah. Constantine and the Nicene uh, yeah. meeting set a lot of things in motion that are not true. They're just not true. And the scholars had a real hard time putting again together the can, canonicity uh, in, in certain words that were brought down and certain ideas. And so I try to go to the depth in, of it in my book to explain some of these things. What, what I was going to say about the garden tomb for- Do you go into this just to prove people wrong or do you go into it and all of a sudden you discover this? I'm not trying to be combative or curmudgeonous. It just turns out that I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> and I'm going, man, what we've accepted as the truth is nothing but Christian traditionalism or Jewish traditionalism. Or was Christ crucified? He was crucified on Mount Olivet. He wasn't crucified in the garden tomb or in the church of the Holy Sepulchre. I can prove it. I can prove it and I do prove it in that book. There's, there, the temple is really in, instrumental in, in, in locating the actual crucifixion site of Jesus. He wasn't crucified at the garden tomb and he wasn't crucified at the church of the Holy Sepulchre. One important detail that might 
people are going to get mad at me for that. But, but uh, when, you remember when the centurion was um, at the feet of Jesus when he was killed? And if, you're, if you're God, why don't you come down from that cross, save yourself and others? Well, the centurion didn't say that. Somebody else, the, 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 the Roman guards. The, the, the yeah. Sanhedrin were saying yeah. that. Okay, yeah. big, big shot, come yeah. on down from yeah. there, right? But the centurion uh, f saw the earthquake and he saw the, the veil, which was probably 70 feet high or more uh, over the temple. Tear. There was a lintel, of, uh, probably 30, 30 ton lintel of cement or whatever they made it out so of. So there's like an earthquake that created that rip? The, the, cur the earthquake cracked the mantle, the, 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 uh, the mantle and it split the curtain, okay? And so the centurion said, surely this must be the Son of God. You remember the scripture, sure. like, well, how could he see that unless it was on the Mount of Olivet? He, he couldn't have seen it from the north side of town. It, 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 it would have been too far away and it would have been blocked by the, the walls the, the walls, he couldn't have seen it, nor could he have seen it from the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. The only place he could have witnessed the tearing of the temple was from the east. So he was looking from the Mount of Olivet down towards into the confines of, of the temple where he saw this 68, 70 foot, 75 foot tear of the, of, of the curtain. It's the only place he could have seen it from. There's a lot of other reasons why uh, it had to be east uh, uh, of the temple. And, and the principal reason is... So have you walked to the place where you think it was? Well, there's a Muslim mosque over because Satan knows exactly the holy site, the holiest site on the planet. So there's a mosque there now. It's so some, some, some building that is a monument unto Allah uh, that, that is about 200 meters from where the temple would have been. But the temple is really the critical factor because everything that was determined by the Sanhedrin had to be done in front of the Holy of Holies, even though there was a veil there, on the other side of the veil, they had to make their decisions about Jesus and all kinds of, the animal sacrifices were just east of that too. So it's as though God had to see everything going on and all the determinations had to be done in front of the Holy of Holies. That, that was the face of God. God was between in the presence, the Shekinah presence was between the angels on the Ark of the Covenant. So it's got, God's got to be watching it. So if that's the case, then the doorway, you know, uh, of the temple would have framed the exact spot where Jesus was killed because God had to be watching this sacrifice of his own son. So, so Jesus was killed east of the temple and that's why the location of the temple is critical in understanding the very place where Jesus died, how he died, and the, the, the magna magnanimous reason why he died. And it's just, we, we have so much tradition blocking a clear view of the power of his death that uh, it, it, it hinders our prayer life, it really does. So my whole thing is to, is to open up some pathways so that people have a greater capacity to pray and interact with God's kingdom. So that's why I did the book. It had nothing to do with proving anybody wrong. It had to do with equipping God's people with greater understanding so they could pray more effectually. Do you take tours to Israel? I, you know, I, somebody, this is the third time this has come Cause you, up. Because you would be on a tour, they would go crazy. Oh, I have three people asking me. Two of the people that wanted to go with me are here today. They, they're my friends. And then I had somebody write me, Ken, are you ever going to do a tour of, of, of Israel? But you're going to take them to sites that they have never traditionally. The, like, Herman, the Garden of Gethsemane where people go. Have you been there? Have you yes. Been? Okay, the gar where the trees? Yes. That's not the Garden of Gethsemane, but you, you see these old trees and it they say- It felt well, so good when I was there. <laughs> of course. And you know, when I went to the garden tomb, when I first got saved with my pastor, who's a powerful man of God, we went inside that, the, 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 that tomb where it says, he is not here for he is risen. Right. I've been in there a lot of times and he, and, and he wept like a baby. And he, this is a great man of God. I'm not, not that weeping is wrong, but I'm going, that's amazing. I was overwhelmed with how he was taken emotionally. And I've seen people worship with their hands up in front of there. And I'm going, yeah, they're having an experience with the Lord for sure. But that's not where he died. You can have all kinds of emotional experiences. And so that you doesn't... think you know where he died? Absolutely no. I know within 30 feet of it. And, and, that, and, and it's, not, it's not where people think. It's, it's between the two swales of the Mount of Olivet. There's two halves to it, you know, and there was a roadway that came all the way from Jericho all the way to the temple. And when Jesus rode in from, uh, from in town on the, on the donkey, he was on that roadway that went right to the temple. He was killed along that roadway you know, into, into Jerusalem between the two swales. It wasn't, not, wasn't the top of the Mount of Olivet. It was on the roadway that he came through where 
the, the altar of the red heifer was, where they collected taxes, where they rendered decisions about people that uh, committed sins outside of the camp of Israel. They had a different place where they made determinations. But everything had to be done as though God's watching from the Holy of Holies. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and so we, we... I have one minute left, and I'm going to a video of some of your film. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, why should they have this book? It'll it revolutionize sure my attention. It'll it'll revolutionize your understanding. Take you right down to this. You walk with Jesus all the way through the last seven days. It'll open up new vistas of prayer and insight into the kingdom of God. It's it's an incredible revelation. Why should they? And you say this is free. Yeah, it's free. Go Just to the go, website. Go to the website. You get it for free. Just you can download it, and this will show you why I came to the conclusions in this book. Okay, so you need both of them. I, I mean, it's amazing. So. Are we ready, Brooke? All ready to go to the film? Yeah, 15 seconds. Yeah, take a look at this. Uh, you will remember Ken Klein <laughs> after you see this film. Can you imagine free? Take a look. Hi, I'm Ken Klein. I've been following Christ for almost 50 years. During that time, I've produced 20 films, pastored three churches, and been to Jerusalem nine times while I've raised a family. You know, if you were to ask me today, Ken, do you hear, after all these years, the voice of God? I'd have to stumble around and say, you know, I, sometimes I think I do, I hope I do, I'm not sure. But the Bible tells us today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Why is it we have so much trouble hearing the voice of God, especially when it says, my sheep know my voice? The answer is, we listen to the voice of tradition rather than the voice of God. And that's why I've written the book, The Unforgettable Tree. This book clearly identifies where, how, and why Jesus died. This book is very important to clear up the mental debris that we've acquired through religious traditionalism. I want to thank you in advance for helping me. I'm Ken Klein.